On this episode of the Nugget Project, I learn how to weld and we start fixing the chassis on our MR2. Welcome back guys. Well, it has been a hot minute since we've been in the shed and I've just been flat out with work and traveling for work and all sorts of stuff and family and all this jazz, but also I've been preparing a lot of stuff in the background for this car. So let me get the camera off the tripod and show you what I've been up to. So the car looks no different than the last time you've seen it. I've just now got two big jack stands. Thanks to my dad, he brought the other set so the car is up and nice and stable. I do want to jack it up a little bit higher, but it's ready to go. Um, the next step I'm going to do in this video is we'll take the wheels and all the control components out. We're going to strip it down and basically just get it down to a full shell so we can start these rust repairs. Speaking of which, over here I have my welder now somewhat set up. So it is an old welder, it's an old uni MIG. Um, it's not an inverter welder, it's whatever the other type is. I'm sure someone can correct me in the comments. Um, and I've been getting it set up for sheet metal. So most welders use a sort of a, a larger diameter wire. For sheet metal, you wanna use a thinner wire. Now I have consulted with people who do uh, work on Japanese cars. Japanese, especially the old JDM cars, run quite a thin sheet metal. So you wanna run a thinner wire. If I can get into here without knocking everything off, like that. Yo, let's put this cover off. Here we go. So inside here we have our wire. So this is a 0.6 mil wire which is what was recommended to me by uh, many gurus for this car and for this process. And I had to set it up for this machine. So we've had to set the tension, I've had to change over the pulley so it accepts a smaller wire. But also inside the main feed line that goes up to our gun, a lot of that had to be changed too. So there's a liner inside that wire that is too big for the smaller wire. So I had to change that down to a 0.6 mil, which was actually very hard to find. Um, also, we have our nozzle inside the gun that had to be changed down to a 0.6. So lots of little things that meant running around and trying to find all this stuff. And then, yeah, I've been doing a few little test welds, set the machine up to work. And so far, it's looking pretty good. Now, from my experience doing this whole YouTube thing, I've noticed there is a couple of things that gets everybody riled up in the comments, especially the experts and the, uh, the older generation tend to pipe up hard on these things. One is paint. Whenever you paint a car, my God, all the experts come out. They all just go, oh, take it to a paint shop, all that sort of stuff. No one wants you to do anything yourself. I don't get it. The other thing is welding. Everybody loves to grill your welds and tell you how you've done it wrong. Um, so this is gonna be interesting. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of comments telling me what I've done wrong. Just remember, by the time you've commented, it's done, it's finished. I can't go back and fix that weld. That's not how time works. Time is linear as far as we're aware. So yes. I appreciate any comments, but just be aware, once it's done and the video's out, that happened ages ago, okay? So, some other things with this welder. You would have noticed a couple of these cool little magnets for holding uh, metal in place, and I actually used that for um, doing my test welds, and they were really handy, they're really good. Um, also, my shiny new little helmet, it's only a cheapo, but uh, the helmet my old man gave me with the welder was pretty average, and it wasn't really triggering, so I went down to Total Tools to go and get a fancy helmet, and they had five of these on sale for $29. They usually retail for 90, read the reviews and everybody reviewed it really well, five stars. So, it's super comfy and it's working well so far. So cool, nice new fresh helmet to protect my eyes and my face. Um, the other thing you'll notice is a brand new earth lead. So the earth lead on this thing was this cactus. So I made a new one. So I went and bought a new clamp and then um, yeah, cut back the lead. Redid it and some nice heat shrink and we have a good earth leak because bad earth will not help welds. Obviously we now have gas, so I'm running a gas system. You can run this gasless with a flux wire, but I want to run gas because it is a much better way of welding. So we've got our gas bottle here, which I got from, from uh, BOC. Um, it's on a plan sort of thing where you go in and you swap the bottle over and it's not too expensive. Spoke to the guys there and this should last me quite a while, so that's good. Um, yes, and as I mentioned, we've got the liners, got it all set up, and even though it's an old welder, it does a pretty good job. So I would love a new fancy pants one, but we work with what we got. And honestly, you can pick these things up on Gumtree now for a few hundred bucks, they're not that expensive. So once again, in the interest of showing you how to do this stuff yourself, if you were interested in doing this, you can go and pick these things up. It's not a lot of money. And that wire, that wire should be enough to do this whole car. It was 35 bucks for that whole roll. Same, as you can see in the background there, I've got some sheets of steel. 
So that is our 0.8 millimeter cold rolled steel. So once again, spoke to the experts. I haven't just gone out and gone, I'm gonna go get steel. Went and spoke to some guys that work on Japanese cars. Now the old JDM cars tend to have a, a thinner sheet steel. So they've all recommended go with a 0.8. They said you can run one mil, but you just, especially if you're doing butt welds, if you're trying to uh, cut the sheets, butt them up together and weld, you, it, it's very hard to get it right. So they said run 0.8, much easier to form, will work much better for this car. So thank you for everyone who gave me advice on that. So we've got the steel there. I've got three sheets of that. Oh, I don't know what size, it's like 1.2 by 800. Um, I had to get them to cut it up so I can get it in the car. The three sheets of that cost me $65. And there's a fair chance that's gonna do the whole car. So we're going pretty good, you know. A bottle of gas, $35 roll of, um, wire and obviously some little parts for the welder and then 65 bucks worth of steel. If I can get a lot of the car rust fixed for that, you know, for shit like under 150 bucks, that's pretty cool. So this is why I want to learn how to do all this myself because if I take this car over to a repairer, it's going to be in the thousands and thousands and thousands to get this rust repair. And that's fair enough because it's time. It's a lot of time. Right. So that's all the welder set up and ready to go and we will get stuck into that later, but I've got some other things to show you. Very cool things from my friends at Raceworks. Okay, so in this dark corner of the workshop over my workbench, we have some very cool stuff from my friends at work Raceworks. Raceworks are supporters of this channel and they make some incredible products and they are super nice guys. So I'm very appreciative to have you on board. First couple of things we've got is this. So I showed you in one of the previous videos that the um, overflow tank for the radiator was pretty cactus and that Braceworks do one that would fit perfectly in place. And here it is, look at that beauty. So anodized black, beautiful alloy overflow tank. Now, this one is designed with a pressure cap, which we won't need. So I will have to just modify the cap inside. I'll basically cut the spring out of it and we'll just turn that into a standard overflow. Also have to get a couple of fittings, but that will work beautifully. I've had a look, it fits the engine bay nice and that's a really nice upgrade from the stock crappy plastic one. I'm not all about original. I don't care about that sort of stuff. I know some people are like, gotta get the original bolt and nut. I don't care about that. I just want the car to be rad. So this is rad. So thank you to Raceworks for that. Also, Raceworks is a part of um, PAT, Premier Auto Trader um, Group. And they do um, some really cool stuff like sensors and leads and all that sort of stuff. So we've got some new plugs, obviously for our 4AG. We have here a brand new oxygen sensor because the old one looks very cactus. So that's amazing. Um, this is a set of leads for the 4 OGE, fantastic. And these two here, two, is a brand new Denso fuel pump from Japan. So Denso, Japanese brand that you will find in every Japanese car. They make all sorts of stuff. And there we have a brand new fuel pump for the car. So. The old one, I can, we haven't even tested, but I can guarantee it's cactus or it's gonna be very average. So they sourced me those, thank you so much, fantastic. And because they don't make these anymore, they sent me two of them. So I've got a spare, which is amazing. I also spoke to Jamie from Raceworks and told him my plans for kind of what I'd like to do in the future for this car, engine wise. And he said, this pump will service that future engine build as well, so. Keep an eye out for that one, but that's very cool. So thank you very much for that. Also here we have, they're different boxes, but the same fan is two of these thermo fans. So obviously the fans in the front of this car on the radiator are old technology, 40 years old. I mean, the technology could be 50 years old, who knows? But very basic blade design, very basic motors, very chunky, bulky, heavy things. These are obviously brand new technology, much better blade design. Um, much more efficient. So we've got two of those to go in the front of the car. I will be making up a custom radiator shroud to fit these in. Um, but yes, I just wanted to bring the car into the 20th century a little bit. So got two of those, brilliant. And lastly, we've got these bad boys. So let's bring these over to the camera. See if the camera will focus on those. So these are two Raceworks gauges. We have, which one's this? This is our water temperature gauge. So that is in centigrade for our water temperature, so that'll go into the engine block or into the radiator. And we have our oil pressure gauge, so that'll go into the block and tell us our oil pressure. Very cool things. These have got some really cool features. They're digital, so there's no running 
oil lines into the car, water lines into the car, any of that sort of junk. Um, basically, they've got a digital sender, go to these gauges. They can also be daisy chains, so you can actually link the wires from one to the other, which means you don't have to run, you know, power leads to both. You just go, okay, that one's got power, do a, a joint connector to the other one, and then they work. Really good looking gauges, multiple colors. You just press the button, you can select what color you want. So, you know, we can go a nice, um, sort of a white or a whatever yellow in this car to kind of match the stock gauge cluster. Or if you're feeling spicy, you can go blue or pink or something. But yes, very cool gauges. And I think, personally, I think these are the two most important things to keep an eye on on your car. Oil pressure, water temp. If those two are good, you're pretty good. So with this whole build and not knowing how it's all gonna go, at least I can keep an eye on these things. So awesome. Thank you very much to our friends at Raceworks. That's brilliant. They also are sending me a couple more other goodies, which I'm very excited about. Um, a couple of oil lines and a sexy steering wheel for this car, which I'm really pumped on. So once again, thank you to Raceworks and POT. Stoked to have your parts on the car. Alrighty, so we'll set the time lapse up and I'm gonna strip the wheels and a lot of the control components out of this car. And in a future video, I'm gonna stick them in the sandblaster once I get that running and we're gonna sandblast them all make them all nice and shiny, paint them up, lovely. New bushes probably in a lot of it because they're very old. Um, and once that's done, we can pick where to start on this car with uh, rust repair and welding. And there's a lot of places to choose from because this whole thing is riddled with rust. I got underneath it the other day and it just gets worse and worse when the light's coming through it and it just looks like Swiss cheese. We'll get it done, but uh, yeah. Anyway, let's get this thing apart. Okay, so things have escalated. <laughs> I've um, pulled out pretty much all the control components uh, bar these main brackets, which I'll take out later. And there's our big pile of brakes and suspension and brackets and stuff. But now, now I'm tackling the water lines because you remember rear engine, front radiator. So I've just disconnected them. And that is disgusting. So I've got the lines loose so i'm going to pull them out and we'll check them out but there is some grossness in there some real grossness yuckies Okay, so lots out of the car. I'm just doing sort of, you don't need to watch all this. So I'm just doing little time lapses and just pulling everything out of this car. The engine bay is almost empty now. I've just got, um, got to get this fuel line out and um, just some brake lines. Other than that, that is pretty much bang on empty. I pulled out the old insulation, the heat shielding and that's shag. So I don't know if I'll, I'd, I'd love to get an original one. That'd be amazing. Otherwise I'm going to do some aftermarket stuff stick it up in there and uh, hopefully that'll work well and here's all our pile of stuff like i thought this car was empty but <laughs> there's so much more stuff in here and a lot of it just needs like it's good like this main uh dashboard support like it looks rusty as hell but it's only surface rust so it's just going to be a lot of wire wheeling and then you know prime and paint make that all nice before it goes back in same with all these bits under the car i'm just going to Everything just needs so much cleaning. All the fuel system, the fuel system's good. It just needs, once again, cleaning and getting ready before it goes back in the car. Uh, the underneath of the car is looking pretty good. 
So all our wells are good. The underneath, just a couple of um, these cables, you know, these are like the, the boot release and stuff like that. I've just kind of made sure I remember how they route. Um, and our interior is pretty much empty. So we've just got the speedo cable there, but let me grab the light. This is our problem. This is gonna be one of the hardest things to fix on this car. You can see here, this rust in here. So that's kind of a boxed in section and that is gonna be a right pain in the neck. The only upside is um, no one can see it. So once it's all back together, it's not visible. So this bracket's gonna be a pain, but I'll mark up where everything is or cut that bracket off. And I think I'll just cut everything that's rusty all the way back here and make a full plate, plate that up and then um, weld that bracket back on. You can see the indent here uh, on the other side. That's where the intake is for the heater system. So obviously when it's uh, a left-hand drive car, that's where the intake goes instead. So um, yeah, I don't know why it rusted so bad in there, but it's pretty, pretty gnarly. So I'm gonna have to replace all this. And obviously down here too, this isn't great. So cut all that out and box that up. And then on the inside, and get the light. I showed this to you guys already, but, uh, and then we've got this side, which is nasty. So this is definitely going to be one of the hardest parts of this car to fix, but we'll do it and I'll use good plating. We'll make it even stronger than factory. So we'll get there. The other side's the same, but no one knew it's bad. It's mainly just the, uh, the external bit here, the inside of the car's, um, fine. So that's good. We'll just treat the inside and yeah. But anyway, that's where we're at. So uh, I just want to get this car down to a blank canvas. So just get everything out of it. Cause once I've finished all my rust repairs, I do want to um, coat the underneath of the car. I'm going to do like a Raptor liner. Um, and I want to paint the entire thing. So the engine bay and all that sort of stuff. So once the underneath's done, we'll do all the control components, put them back in so it can wheel. And then I'm going to build a, a paint booth outside, which I'll show you later. And yeah, then I'm gonna have to um, wheel it out and I'm gonna spray the whole thing. Tomorrow we'll find the first bit of rust to work on. Scary, but uh, well they say it's just like eating an elephant. You do it one bite at a time. Alrighty, it's the next morning and we're just gonna get stuck into this. Uh, I think the hardest part about all this is just thinking about it and not just doing it. Obviously this is a big project and it's very new for me as I've mentioned, but just gotta do it, that's how you learn. So I've walked around the car and I've marked out every single piece uh, with a white pen. Every little rust bit that I can find. There's a lot of them. Um, and I wanted to start with something easy. Unfortunately, none of it is easy. Everything has a fold in it or a, um, a seam or something just, yeah, something difficult. This, I think, is going to be one of the easiest bits. It's on the front of the car. It's very easy access because I can access the front and the back. Um, it's open. And the only downside is it does have a mounting hole right in the middle of it, uh, which is probably why it rusted. It's worn through there. Um, but I do have the other side, which is a mirror image. So I'll plate over this. It does have a little bit of a lump where it came out, but honestly, whatever mounts onto that, I'm happy to just run a little spacer or washer to compensate for that lump not being there anymore. Um, and then, yeah, I can copy the, I'll try and copy the hole onto my template, to my cardboard template. If not, I can copy it from the other side. It is a complete mirror image. So anyway, I've buffed it back using my little um, scrubby disc. It's like a Scotch-Brite pad disc. These things are freaking fantastic. They're so good. They remove paint, but don't remove material. Really good. I'm going to mark it out with a pen and then basically we'll just cut it out with a grinder and then we'll make a new plate up for it and try, try and weld a new plate in. And this will be the first of many. So let's see how we go, huh? Uh, the first cut of many. It's pretty nerve-wracking, I'm gonna be honest. I've never cut into a car before and it's not like this anyway, so. I'm sure there's plenty of you screaming at me now, no, you've done it wrong already. Probably have, but you know what, it's my car, so I'm doing it wrong to my car. Anyway, that's out, and if you can see there, that is not a flat piece of metal. That is a curved section. So what I'm gonna to have to do is I will cut another piece of steel out that size 
and then we will um, use some of the new tools that my dad gave me, which I'll show you in a minute, to curve this round to make it the same shape. And we can get it as close as possible. And then we can tack it, and then use a hammer, tap it round, get it the right shape. And hopefully, that all works. Let me show you these cool new tools. Oh, okay, right. So, my old man, the legend, came over the other day. He's been away for months on a mad caravanning adventure. Um, dropped by with some tools for me. So he had a lot of these sitting in his shed. Um, very cool stuff though. So, got a couple of decent panel beating hammers. Very important. Um, and this bad boy for shaping um, steel sheets, which is great. Um, and then all this stuff here, dollies. So for shaping our piece of tin there, that's actually gonna be amazing. We've got all these different curves, got heaps there. And tons of, we've got this guy and this guy, all old dollies, perfect. Shaping steel. These little guys, which is great, they're actually for putting, the camera can see that, they're actually for putting ribs into sheet metal. So you can put small ribs, strengthening ribs, uh, into sheet metal. So they'll be handy for small pieces, that's great. Um, wooden roller for shaping steel. Show you that in a sec. These guys, it's a sandbags for shaping uh, sheet metal. So I can lay it out on the ground, use it with the big hammer to shape nice curves into the steel. Very cool, oh, very cool bit of kit. And a small one. So you use it on the back of panels for shaping panels, very sweet. Um, another dolly there. And then this guy here is very cool. I'm gonna to have to run an airline into this garage. But this is a spot weld, uh, what do you call it? Punch. So, get the camera to focus on it. So the uh, bottom section here is for punching little holes for doing spot welds. So there is a couple of spots in this car which will need that, which is unreal. And this one, um, makes a little shelf in the steel. So it'll actually make a little step up of about one millimeter. Um, so if we need to join any panels together, that we can use that along and hydraulically press and it'll press a little shelf into the steel for joining panels together. So that is a very cool bit of kit. I think it's brand new. I think our, um, our friend Brian who passed away left that to dad. So that's, that's great. We're, that's awesome. We will use that. We will use that. So thank you to dad for bringing all that stuff over. That is amazing and will very, very much help. I don't know if I, fully understand how to use all these tools, but you know, that's what YouTube and Google's for, right? Um, so now, uh, we'll cut a piece of steel. We'll use that old piece as a template. We might make a little cardboard, a CAD template, a cardboard aided design template off of that piece I just cut off. We'll cut a little bit of steel out of our sheet steel we've got there. Uh, and then we'll use some of these tools here to try and bend it to shape. So we can then fit it into that, um, into that hole basically, and then, We'll try for the very first time to tack this, uh, this sheet in. I'm probably just gonna blow massive holes in this thing. I've been practicing and I've only blown a couple of holes so far and that was due to bad settings, so let's do it. Okay, it's not pretty. I've got a few little dents and stuff in there. I'm still figuring out how to do it. Good thing is, 0.8 mil steel, you can bend with pliers very easily. And I'm finding a set of rounded pliers so you don't damage it. You see all these dents where I was hitting it with the hammer? No good, but none of this will be seen and I can um, do a little bit of bog over it. But this piece is just about there. Got some very small gaps, but it's not bad. So I think what I'll do, We'll tack in a couple of spots, and then we can tack in the bottom, tack in the top, and then we'll just use a hammer just to massage the panels together and see what happens. I'll just have to clean all this up so we've got some nice clean surface and try to weld in our first patch. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
Okay, as predicted, my first repair was not great. <laughs> I had a um, bit of blow through, a lot of blow through actually. Um, just playing with it. I, I had my test piece down here and I would do little test runs and it would go fine. And as soon as I bring it up to the main bit, bang, a blow through. So finally kind of got my settings right, watched a couple more tutorials and got the idea I, I was, uh, wasn't pushing. So you're gonna push along so you're not heating up the same bit. Um, and I got some semi-decent welds and a couple of blow-throughs. It's very hard. It's very old, thin steel. Um, yeah, here it is. So, it's not great. You can see all my blow-throughs there. I've cleaned it up with a grinder because, you know, that's what you do when you can't weld. You use a grinder. And I'm sure you welders are going, to be going oh, that shit and all that. Well, you know what? I'm learning, so just, just chill, okay? So these little bits here where it's blown through, I, I've either got two options. I either cut this out and I go again, but I mean, it's, it's in there, it's strong. So what I might do is I'll get a piece of copper. Now I can put the piece of copper behind the hole and then fill those blow through holes uh, using a bit of copper because the weld won't stick to the copper. Um, and just fix up those few little blow throughs. But, um, and I've got a little bit down here. I've got to finish. I don't know, look. It's my first go. I will get better at it because I've got the whole car to do. But uh, we just keep going, huh? Okay, so probably the next um, easiest bit. <laughs> Not easy. Will be this bit here. The thing is, it's uh, several different pieces of metal. You got the sheet on the outside. You got a sheet on the inside. Another one here and the chassis rail in there all kind of join in together. So it's a bit of a tricky one, um, but at least from my point of view, it is fairly straight. So I'm gonna try and um, I'll, I'll cut here and then we'll try and get a chisel in there and chisel it off to keep the inside piece because it's not too bad. And then, um, yeah, see if we can put a new bit in there. So what I'll do is, well, there's the before. I'm just going to get stuck into it and show you the after because if I keep filming every single piece of rust on this car the video is going to be 40 hours long and I just don't have time to be filming while I'm trying to learn how to do this so yeah let's uh let's get stuck into it okay bit of cutting and grinding later and I've just got to bend this a little more but that is a pretty good panel that fits in there perfect so hopefully the welding behaves and we can tack this thing in and that will be a legit good repair. Please behave welder. Okay, it's uh, a while later and I'm still trying to get this machine and me dialed in. A few bits have worked, a few bits haven't. I've been doing test welds and yeah, look, I've blown a couple of little holes, but basically, you know, as the experts say, you do a stitch and you let it cool and you go somewhere else, you do a stitch, etc., and you keep stitching around until the whole thing's, the whole thing's in there. But unfortunately, like here and here, I have blown a hole in it, which is frustrating. Because I kind of get it dialed, I do like three stitches, it's perfect, and then do another couple. And, and um, yeah, you know, it's just playing settings and Playing with technique, I'm trying to do it as quickly as possible, try to get as little heat in it as possible, but this 0.8mm steel is just so thin and I have such little skill. Anyway, watch a few more tutorials, keep on going with it. Okay, so I've got the majority of this welded in. Once again, it's not that pretty. I'm very much just learning. Um, I was getting a few of them down a lot better, just doing a little stitch, little stitch, little stitch. I have got a few of these little blow hole blow throughs, especially this one here, which is terrible. Um, so I'm gonna have a go at fixing them now. Um, one of my mates, Doug, suggested alloy pipe because yes, just like copper, um, well, it doesn't stick to alloy. So I would prefer a big alloy plate, but I don't have one. But I do have this very thick walled um, alloy pipe. So I'm gonna pop that behind and block off that hole. And that's a twofold thing. It obviously stops, gives the weld somewhere to go, but it also um, pulls the heat away from it so you don't yeah, heat up the steel too much. So we'll give this a go and uh, see what happens. And hopefully that is this patch pretty much done and then we can grind it back and see how much we can hide with uh, a grinder and paint. 
Okay, once again, not the prettiest weld, but it filled those holes, so I'll take that. So we'll uh, yeah, a couple of little bits, but that's good. So um, yeah, a little bit janky, but at least the holes are filled. So we'll do that for the three up here. There's a little pinhole there of rust. I'll clean that back, and I might try and fill that too. Let's got these two down here, and then we can give it a grind back and see how it looks. Okay, once again, not pretty, but I think I've got pretty much all the holes filled. There's a couple of tiny ones, but I want to basically grind it all back, and then I can see the last little bits that I'll patch up. Whew, let's see what some grinding and some paint will do. Let's grind it back and have a look at it. Penetration looks good on the back, which is nice, so at least the heat's getting through there. I mean, this is going to be strong as it's not a problem at all. So we'll grind it back and see how pretty we can make it look. Okay, so I could grind it back further, but I don't want to make it any weaker, you know, but that is a solid repair. Obviously, I didn't grind this bit up here because that's where it had the overlap and I stitched along the top to make it strong. Um, there's still just a little hole there and a little hole there that I might just fill, but yeah, look, it's, you know, you can see kind of the little marks where the, like this, this wasn't a, a straight join, so I'm okay with that kind of being like that. And remember this, the bumper's going over the back of this, you're not going to see any of this. So I think for something that you're not going to see, that is fine. And it is rock solid, like it's not going anywhere. Um, the back of it looks okay. So yeah, I'll call that a win. And just for those of you who are interested in welding, there's the back. So you can see it's a uh, good penetration all the way around. It's got a good heat pattern. So look, I'm, I'm happy with that. As I said, I'm learning, still new to it, but I, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that repair. I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so the first two repairs are done on the AW11 and we have many, many more to do. Um, so the one on the front is a bit of a dog's breakfast. I'm probably gonna cut that out and do it again. It's pretty bad. This one, I made a few mistakes, but it's actually not that bad. And when you look at the back of the world, it was good penetration, the heat was good. Like it was actually not that bad for considering I learned how to weld yesterday. Um, I've ground it down and I sprayed it with this, uh, what is it? Rust-Oleum primer and sealer. So you spray rust with that. So any little rust spots left over will get treated with that. Um, and it's a primer as well, like as an etch primer and, and all that. So I've sprayed that and that's now good to go. So yeah, first couple down, as I said, I will get better as I go on. I am getting advice from people. Um, I'm sorry I didn't show a lot of the welding. To be honest, I'm just pretty self-conscious about it. Like, yes, I am putting myself on mine to be seen and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, you know, just getting constant messages about how I'm doing stuff wrong doesn't really give you the energy to go and do more videos. So I'm a little self-conscious about it and I didn't show a lot of my welding, especially when like a few of them worked out really well, but a lot of them went <laughs> and splatter everywhere. I was like, ugh, that sucks. So. Yeah, uh, maybe because we're going to continue this on the next episode where I'm hopefully going to finish the majority of the rust repairs. Um, and I'll, yeah, show you befores and afters. And I will show you a bit more welding on that when I've kind of got my shit together a little bit more. <laughs> anyway, this video is getting a bit long now. So thanks for watching. Um, we will get there. Hell, we're two patches down. I know there's a lot more to go, but I'm now just going to chip away. I'm going to film befores and afters. And we'll, uh, once his chassis is fixed, uh, rust wise we can actually start building this car back up which is awesome so we can start looking at paint and all these sort of fun things and we're going to start doing all the um, all these components you know sandblasting all this stuff down I'll show you all that and painting them up and getting them ready to put back in the car which is all very exciting stuff so thanks for watching guys um, I am doing another run of Nugget Project hoodies so if you would if you missed out and you would like a Nugget Project hoodie please hit me up. I've got four or five people who missed out and have hit me up. So yeah, hit me up now and we'll, uh, we'll get your hoodie organized. Thanks for watching guys and cheers for your support. We will see you in the next episode.